Hello everybody. How's everybody doing today? As usual, I'll just take a moment and let you guys join in while I get things pulled up on my end here. We'll just take a moment. Ruby wants to join us. She's scratching at the door. She can come in for a minute <laughs> while we let you guys join in. If you are there, say hello so that I know whether or not it is working on your end. And we will take a few minutes before we get started. Hi, Ramona. How are you? Did you get a chance to get outside today? It's a beautiful day out. Some of you saw Ruby enjoying the time outside. She knows I'm talking about her. She's right here. <laughs> if you weren't here yet when she was scratching on the door to come in, Ruby is here for a moment. And she was loving being outside today. So was I. Yes, you're right there. I can't pick you up though. <laughs> All right, so I am, sorry, I didn't have the uh, card in the view today. So this is the one that I am going to make for you guys. I have previously posted this one. So I'll bring this a little closer for you guys to see. This one is with the Zoo Crew. So I'm going to bring that page of the catalog in. This one is Zany Zoo stamp set, page 47 of the outgoing catalog. That is this page here. So I have a lot of samples to show you guys that I have made with this suite. I don't think anything is sold out. The whole suite was still available yesterday. So hopefully that hasn't changed, but it has this really cute DSP. I will show you guys that. We have some fun ribbon, which I actually forgot to grab to have handy for this card. Actually, I don't think I need it for this card. I used it on a different one that I'll show you, but this is the coordinating ribbon. So there's this lemon lime twist and then um, petal pink. So a couple of cute patterns and they're nice and soft, so easy to tie. And then we have the stamp and dies. So I will show you those as well. You get all of these cute little critters. Sorry, that was a little close. And then we have all of these cute dies that go with it. So some of them, you can, there is one to coordinate with all of these images here, but then some of them also coordinate with some of the DSP. So this one is not actually, I was thinking this one was one of the coordinating ones, but this one I fussy cut. But we have the super cute little fox. We have, um, this one here with the little alligator that one has a die here so that's from the dsp and you can cut it out with this die here this one was one i did on a live last year around this time and this one is a gift card holder so it opens up here it's a gift card holder pocket so that's the front but it's like a double card so you open that part up but then you can also open this part up and then you could write a message on a sticky note or something like that and put it on the inside but you get to see all this fun pattern and then you also fold that back up and create the little gift card there so that is another one of them and then we have this one here that i use the dsp from again this one is not stamped that one actually there is no stamp to coordinate with this one but he's having a s'more party of one <laughs> and I watercolored a background. I did this one on a live last year as well. So if you want to catch the replay this one, you can go back to last year or go back to um, YouTube and catch that one. I also have this one here. These are the, oh gosh, here, I'm going to backtrack one second. This one, these striped pieces are from the coordinating DSP as well. And then this one here, these are the color collections. So this is the brights and then the subtles. So you get the polka dotted paper, the striped paper. There is, um, I'll show you another sheet so that you can see what the varying patterns are. You get stripes, polka dots, 
and then we have the dashes and hearts on the other side. So those are the four patterns you get in the color collections of DSP. I use those with the tailor-made tags, another outgoing item, and then these little critters here I have cut from the DSP. So actually this is the only one that was die cut. These two I fussy cut. And then here I use the happy birthday to you and I split it up here. I didn't like it all in one chunk. So I just stamped it, embossed it once and then I just snipped the words apart. So don't be afraid to do that. So that was another one. Here's another card that I did on a live last year. So you guys can always catch that replay again. And I don't remember what the name of this fold is, but um, I think I had gotten a card with this really neat fold. Hi, Linda and Lena. How are you guys? And so we had made this card like that. And then this just swivels on the, um, the little peak there. I love these guys. And these ones I fussy cut as well. <laughs> so you guys know me. I'm a sucker for it. And then this one here, sadly, Rays of Light is already gone, so we can't get that one. But I had used Rays of Light and then this cute little s'more guy again, except for he is, he has a s'more, but he's also roasting a wiener. This is the curtain tie back. So I'll bring this closer. This little image or die cut right there to me looked like a wiener. So I was like, well, he's just gonna be roasting weenies and I guess he is double roasting. He's got a marshmallow on there too. And then more patterns from the coordinating DSP that I use there. So I have cut out the trees, the cute little lion, and then the celebrate is another um, cutting apart or surgery on greetings. This celebrate, is from this here. So I stamped that and then I just cut that word out. So I didn't mask it or anything, just stamp the full thing and snip around there. And that's how I got this little celebrate on there. So don't be afraid to cut out portions that you want. Now I have two more that I can show you guys and we'll get into the other card. So this is another one. Oh gosh, I can't remember which design challenge this one was for, but this these letters are from the trucking along bundle. I'll grab the, oh no, I won't. That punch rock has gone downstairs already. My apologies. I can't grab that truck punch quickly, but the wheel wells, I think it's the wheel wells or the, oh gosh, what is it called? The little part that goes around the wheel. <laughs> anyway, whatever that is, the wheels and then the part, oh, it's going to bug me what that name is, but I made these, the choo-choo out of the truck punch. Every time I punched that out and had the little bits left over, that's what they looked like to me. So I, and then I also made these little train cars out of the truck punch as well. So these are some of the, oh gosh, the festive pearls, I think they're called in the annual catalog that I put in the wheels and then some other gems I put in the middle of the circles to make them look like O's. And then these are all little elements cut from the DSP. And then these are color collection DSP again. So those are also the brights. The balloons are from this collection and so are the little clouds so if you like little elements for your paper crafting they're super cute trees a super cute flower you've got balloons wieners in my mind and then more flowers you've got a scalloped edge i have used the scalloped edge on other projects when i just want a simple scalloped edge that has come in handy it's actually most of the time not even sitting on this um collection of dies. It's usually just in my magnetic tray, which I can show you guys real quick if I can find my magnetic tray. We have things all over. If, um, if I come across it real quick while I'm designing, it's strange that it's not right here because that's where we put. Anyhow, I have a little magnetic tray and most of the time this die sits right in it because it's a go-to. Anytime I've got a scalloped edge, um, that's where it stays. And I have not noticed, have any of you who have your catalogs already noticed if there is a scalloped edge in the new catalog or any nice borders? Cause we're losing the basic borders, but, um, thanks Lena. Oh, you're tired. Me too. Actually today's been, I've just felt tired today. Maybe it's the weather changing, but anyhow, lots of really great dyes in this one. And then even if you don't get the dies, the paper itself is awesome with all those cute little characters. So that is the second last card. And then I have this one as well. So this one 
is, oh my goodness, I will find the name of that real quick after I show you the card. So I blended on here, stamped the cute little music notes that we have here, and then more fussy cutting. So I actually haven't stamped with the little critters. I have just been using the DSP. So hi, Melody. So I have fussy cut those little characters. I did use the happy birthday to you. This is the radiating, radiating stitches dies. And then I used some of the DSP from this collection. And this is the gorgeously made DSP for that nice pop of lemon lime twist on there. So don't be afraid to mix your DSP packs. This is from Patchwork Pieces. That's which one that was from. All right, so I'll move these aside and I will get into the card that I'm gonna make for you guys. One more thing, these cute little daisies, I love those, um, are retiring as well. So I will quickly tell you guys which page those are on. I don't think they've sold out. They are on page 139, they are number four, they're 40% off for $5.85. They are a really cute little addition. So if you like something simple, they're cute. And then this again is that uh, specialty, the Basics Vellum specialty paper, just that little bit of stripe there. So don't miss out on that. I don't think it sold out overnight either. I hope not anyhow. So, oh, I'm knocking things off here. All right, so I will put this page aside, but if you want anything from this suite, don't delay, you don't have much time left, and we never know what's gonna happen during retirement period with um, product sellouts. So that is this one. If you need the French version, it's actually 30% 30 30 off down to 25.20. The dies alone are 30% off down to 32.90, and the ribbon duo is 40% off down to 825. So this is your chance to get some of that stuff before it's gone. I will put this away and we will get into making this card. So I did not introduce myself at the beginning. So I'm Alana Wharf, Sleepless Stamper. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Manitoba, Canada. And today I am going to show you, gosh, I think it's day five of the Something Old, Something New series. I am featuring retiring product and new product. So this one is actually just retiring product with a little bit of new. This star from when I made this card, I, we don't have this glitter paper. So I have pulled in some returning product for you guys to replace that star. So one little bit of something new for you guys. All right, if you'd wish to, if you'd like to share the video for a chance to win a version of this card, you can share and then come back and comment that you did. On Sunday, I will do all of the draws from Monday of this week through to the 28th so that I can possibly get the cards sent out while we are away. All right, so it's time to review the supplies. I have a thick white card base. It is four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. I like tent fold. Tent fold. If you prefer book fold, you would just cut at eight and a half by five and a half and score at four and a quarter. So it would just be a little different for you. Now I have a lemon lime twist layer that I will layer these pieces on. It is two and three quarters by four and three quarters. Let me just make sure I measured that properly. Yes, four and three quarters. I have the scalloped rectangle from Scalloped Contours Dies. I don't think they've sold out. I could be wrong on that. Let me just check my book. Um, I don't know if I've updated the dies. I have tried to keep up to date with my stamps, marking them when they're sold out. Scalloped Contours Dies are 30% off down to 33.60. Hi, Cindy, how are you? Unless they're sold out, so you just have to check that. Um, so that's that one. And then I also have the Nested Essentials. That is a vellum one. I apologize, that's sold out, but here you guys can see how much I like my vellum and how you can use just a little bit to tone down some elements on your project or to help anchor them. I have a little strip of the 3D Basics embossing folders. I used one of those to texture this piece here. That's going to just go in here. I added a little bit of texture in there with that. I have, yes, be glad you have those dies. 
This is a little greeting strip from the Happy Little Things. Those are in the online exclusives. And then this is the something new. It This is literally something old, something new. We used to have silver foil paper, so something old, but it is also new again. This is returning in the new annual catalog. I apologize, the window is open because it's warm in here and Ruby's outside. <laughs> so she um, is making a little bit of racket back there. I apologize. That is, um, un well, I won't say unfortunate because that's okay. And I have the scrap, which I actually don't think I need because I'm going to cut this cute little raccoon from the DSP. So I'll show you the DSP as well. I have this pattern here, which is where I'm gonna cut this little raccoon from. This is the one, sorry, I'm trying to flip this without doing it right in front of your face. This cute pattern on the back. And then I need this one because I'm going to use this pattern on the back. All right, so first of all, I will bring in, oh, you know what, I do need to tell you a couple other products first before we get into that. That star is this one. It is from the Beautiful Balloons Dyes. And I am pretty sure that this is also retiring. I don't think they're on sale, but I might be wrong. Let's just check for you guys. Um, I don't know that they're on sale. We will check page 155 just in case. I tried to come back to both pages when something was marked down. Oh, the dies are 10% off down to 4230. I forgot to come back and mark that on this page. And then I have one more retiring product, or two actually. I have the Timeless Arrangement stamp set. I believe the stamp set is still available. The dies have sold out. So this one I used the You Are The Best from here, I love these simple greetings on here. So even if you can't get your hands on the dies, this thank you is my most used thank you stamp. I love that one. And then I have used these little, um, just simple little greetings a lot too. So those are a good one. And then I have the, uh, I was just gonna call them resin dots, but I'll give you the actual name, ombre matte decorative dots. So any of my resin dots, I store them in this case here, cause I have, a case per type of embellishment. So that is all of the product that I have used. Normally I might not go through every single little thing, but there's so many things retiring that I may as well fill you guys in. All right, so first what I like to do, if I have just a small wrong sheet, this one here, if I have a small element that I am going to die cut or fussy cut, I like to cut around it first. Now I'm just deciding which one I want to snip around. I think I will, rather than cutting into one right in the middle of the sheet, I like to assess if I were to cut this one, let's say I wanna cut a strip of paper. This one has the least full characters near it. See here, if I cut into this one, well, I can't cut across here later because it would interfere with this one. So I'm gonna go with this guy right here. That interferes the least, in my opinion anyway, with other characters on the page if I wanna to try to cut big pieces. Now, sometimes that doesn't matter, but sometimes it does. So I've got this one trimmed down. Now I need the little die from the coordinating set because this guy does have a die. I almost second guessed myself for a second there, you guys. And we can just tape the die right over top of that image. So I just need to line that all up. I apologize, I have to hold it up for me to see it first and then I'll show you guys. I'll try to line it up as best I can. So this is just a piece of post-it tape. So I've got that all lined up. I'm going to move these elements aside and bring in my mini stamp cut and emboss machine. And we'll get this cut out. So I've got that and 
the next pad here. So with the mini stamp cut and emboss machine, your sandwich is a little bit different. You don't have as many plates, so you just have this plate number one, plate number two, your paper and your die, and then you can put the next plate number two. You wanna get that to grab and then just give that a turn. If there's anything you are interested in ordering before it's gone, I will be placing another order after I get off the live. I have a few things to add. So you can either message me or you can feel free to shop online with this host code here. If you make a purchase of $65, you will qualify for my free retirement party gift. If you make a purchase of $100, then you will get the free gift as well as the free retirement party class. So that's our cute little raccoon. I think it's adorable. And I actually have yet to color it. I just leave them with the color that's on there, but you could always choose to color more if you wanted to. I'm just gonna leave him uh, simple like that. Now I'm gonna bring in my little die cut and the You Are The Best from Timeless Arrangements. See, you can see that's my most used one. And there's this one. I've used that little thank you lots. How many of you have timeless arrangements and is it staying in your collection? It is staying in my collection. I love the dies that go with it too. Now I can see that there's cat hair on this one already. So I told you guys the other day that with these little greetings, I find it easier to put it face down and then it's it will sit straighter when you put it face down and then just pick it up like that. Then that way I'm not accidentally bending it, trying to get it to go straight onto the block. Now I have Memento ink. I don't like to use stays on on my um, polymer. So whenever possible, I will go for stays on. Now I'm stamping this off to the side here. You can see that here. I don't, I want a little bit of room on this side of the greeting to tuck behind the raccoon. I think we were talking, gosh, I feel like I did a live in around Easter time, or maybe it was in my posts online, but I was sharing about Louis the raccoon. He is this year's Cadbury bunny contest winner. If you like to follow cute animal content, follow Louis the raccoon. He's adorable. And you'll see his Cadbury bunny photo, but, um, they it's a rescue and so this family has multiple raccoons i'm not sure that i would want one but they're so cute not when they are destructive my neighbors i'm sure don't like them because they have gone through their roof twice now but um yeah louis the raccoon he's adorable so now i have some lemon lime twist this again is from the brights collection and i need that dsp i showed you before which is this one. So I'm gonna give you guys these two measurements and I'll show you how to get that diagonal there. So I'll move these guys aside and I'll give you this measurement. So this lemon lime twist polka dot is two and five eighths by two and a quarter. Okay, so we'll cut this one. I have my little cutter handy for this. What did everybody do today? We had a busy day of haircuts and acupuncture and different things. So I said two and five eighths by two and a quarter. I just wanted to measure twice, cut once, so I don't mess that up. I'm just gonna flip this upside down just to see if, um, yeah, that's actually where I cut that off. So two and five eighths. So that is the two and five eighths. Now I wanna rotate this. And I'm actually gonna go like this, two and a quarter. Okay, so I've got two and a quarter by two and five eighths. Now I am going to need my large cutter for this one. And I am going to bring in this cutter. So that way I can cut just the portion I want without having to cut into these cute characters. I don't want to cut his tail off by cutting all the way down here 
or cut into these guys if not necessary. But again, I'm assessing my paper and I don't wanna cut the piece that I need right here because it will cut his tail off. I wanna keep this guy intact. These ones, he's already partial here. This one's already partial here. I've got lots of extra bunnies throughout the paper, so I don't mind losing these, but I would rather keep this one intact. So I'm actually gonna cut that piece from right here. I hope that makes sense. All right, you shopped, Melody. Were you shopping for stamps? <laughs> um, I didn't get to go shopping yet today, nor will I today, but tomorrow and the next day probably will be. I need a bathing suit for our trip. So this is two and five eighths by I'm gonna cut it at three so two and five eighths by three so I am first going to put this in here at the three so I want to go because so I'm gonna cut this bottom corner off let me just make sure my measurement is accurate before I measure twice cut once right so I'm gonna go by three and that is a tad long, but that's okay, I can fix that. I just don't want it to be too short. So now I'm gonna bring my cutter or my blade into the two and five eighths. And then that way I can cut only as much as I want. And I apologize, you are getting my head in your view possibly. Stamp and die organization. Hey Melody, I don't know if Cindy's still here, but you two would get along great. Cindy's got fabulous organization from what I remember. I think you two would get along. All right, so there is two and five. Now I'm flipping it, so this is the part where I cut. I'll just backtrack there. So here is where I cut to the two and five eighths. Now I wanna rotate this, that's that portion, but I need it at, um, now I need to put this over to the two and five eighths, and I need it to be three inches tall. So when I cut this at the, two and five eighths this should bring me down to three there we go let's hope i did that right so this there we go so i cut this three inches long by two and five eighths wide and that is the piece that i need so i'm okay with having this little bit here because again i can rotate this over and i still have all of these guys intact whereas if i would have hacked into here it might have cut some of them off so I try to be strategic in how I cut my DSP, especially with those cute little characters. I know when that paper first came out, everybody was saying, get one pack for the back sides, the cute black and white back sides, and one pack for the adorable critters. So this is, you've got these cute, I'll show it to you quickly. I believe the paper is still available and I hope I'm not teasing you guys if it's not. So we got these cute, camping critters on one side and then this black and white flower print on the other we've got these musical little critters on one side and then these polka dots on the other we have the dancing critters whoopsie on one side and these little dashes on the other Then we have the, I'd say hobbies on one side. Look at that sloth, it's so cute. Hobbies on one side, so we got an artist, a baker, a knitter, somebody's reading, just super cute. And then these scallops on the other side. Many of you have probably seen these, but just in case. And then we also have the patterns I have already shown you these two we've got these um i'd say things that move <laughs> and then these chevrons then we have the party characters and whoopsie stars now that's all of them such cute paper it's one of my favorites all right so now we need to give this i'll bring the card back in i have cut this on a diagonal now this one followed a sketch if you like this sketch if you go to Stampin' Fancy Friday on Instagram or Facebook, I think it was January or February, this was the sketch. No, it was March, I think. Um, it was a sketch challenge. So everybody designed with this sketch. So check that out if you like a good sketch challenge. All right, so we are going to, I think you can do this by cutting them at once, but I'm too chicken. 
So I'm not gonna do it that way. <laughs> um, all right, so this side is three inches tall. Why am I so chicken, guys? I don't know, but I am. So to two and a half. So we have a half inch difference from this corner to this corner. So the back is easier to mark on. So I'm gonna mark this side here a half inch down. So flipping it over, it's now moved over to this side. And silly me, I don't have a pencil in here. So hopefully this won't go through, but it'll be hidden behind there. So I'm going down to the half inch on this side and I'm going to cut along this line. So now to get that diagonal, this is the side I wanna keep the proper length. So I'm gonna put that side on the corner or the corner right on the edge of the blade. I don't wanna cut that one any shorter. And this one here, I'm gonna put down to the half inch mark there. Again, there is a way where you can stack the papers together. I'm just always too chicken to do it. So now I can cut that. Okay, so now we have this. That little dot is fine because this is going to cover here. So now that goes like that. And this one here, I need to cut a half inch up on this side, but you know what? I like these partial dots there. So I'm actually gonna rotate this this way. Now I wanna cut a half inch up on this one. So I'm gonna, again, I don't wanna mark it on this side because I have a marker. So I'm just gonna mark it on the back here, a half inch. Make sure that I'm doing this right. Now I could also, you know what, I'll just use this and then we know it's the same. I'm gonna just put this one on here. but I need to flip it over. I don't want to mark on the right side, the side I'm going to see. I'm just going to mark that. And now I know to go from this corner to there. You just have to be cautious of which side you're marking on and which side the angle goes when you're doing this so that they match up in the end. So now again, I'm putting the corner on the blade and this half inch on the blade and then I will get my diagonal cut. There we go. So now we have our diagonal cut. There. It's fun to mix things up a little bit with your layers and go for different layouts. Now we have that. How's that, you guys? I do have my cutter nearby just in case I still need it. Melody, I am going to use um, Tombow today for this instead of the seal, just in case I need to wiggle things around a little bit. Does anyone have any plans to go away this spring or summer? We um, are super lucky. Ethan's exams will just be finished. For those of you who don't know, he's our older son. So I'm putting this one near the top with just an equal border around there on all three sides. And now I was telling you guys, if this one's a little bit too long, all I need to do is just cinch it up some. I don't even need to cut it if it's a little off. And then I'll glue this one down like that. So thankfully he'll be finished his exams right in time. It's kind of sad to glue over these cute little guys. And then we'll get back just in time for Lennon to perform in Newsies. So if you are local and you like musicals, his school is doing Newsies and he is, gosh, what is the name of that character? He was in Newsies years ago, right before we went to Greece and he was Les, the little brother of the, there's a brother, two brothers combo or duo in um, the newspaper carriers. And now he's the older brother. So when he did it the first time, they actually, he had an older sister. They put a girl in that role. And um, so now he's the older brother, but Davey, maybe it's Davey. I feel like it might be Davey. Okay, so there we go. Now we have those two cute patterns on there. I have distressed the edge just a tad, so I'm gonna do that. And then both boys, are going to be in Seussical the Musical in November. Some of you will know they were in Seussical the Musical together when they were in the Divisional Musical Theater program. 
And now they are going to be in it together in this community theater program. So Ethan actually gets to reprise his role of Horton. Now this little white piece back here, I've also distressed the edges of that. And I don't need to do one long side because it will be hidden behind the, um, behind here. So I just did the top, the bottom, and this side here. So I've got that ready. Now with this piece here, this actually, you can see, is not wide enough because this goes over to here. It's not wide enough for this. So I've actually split this behind here to make it go a little bit wider. I wanted to anchor all of this stuff down with, with just a little bit of detail. So we're gonna cut this and no one will ever know, right? There we go. So now we have two different elements there to make this go a little bit wider. Now we can bring in our card base. I'm just gonna tuck that under there. I'm gonna glue this down. I'm not sure if this set of embossing folders is still available. It might be gone. It was in the 3D, or sorry, the 3D. It is the 3D basics and it was in the online exclusives. There was this one here, which I call crosshatch, and then there was a polka dotted one and a floral one. Now I should have dry fit this first because this is slightly too big, but I am going to, I wanna see just the edge of the stitched border so this is where you guys get to see me perform surgery. There we go. So just a hair needed to come off. And now I'm just gonna tuck my scissors in here to distress that just a bit. There we go, now they match. No stress. <laughs> Sorry about that guys. All right, so now this is on here. And what we need to do is I am going to glue this guy down, bring this closer. Can you see here, there's just that thin little scalloped border there. So what I'll actually do is put dimensionals on here and then I'll stick it down to this one here. And make sure my dimensionals, oh yeah, they're right beside me. Been blowing through dimensionals got to run all right well we'll see you later thanks for joining in so i am going to put these along this side that's this side here and then i'll stick it down to this one because the scallop is right down to the card but it's just peeking out from this side here so there you hear ruby again i have to flip this upside down so i can do this There we go, so we have that. Now, I want to see about one and a half scallops, so I'm gonna put some dimensionals on this side too. And then I'm gonna put a couple in the middle. Don't mind me being generous <laughs> with my dimensionals. Okay, now we've gotta flip this over and we're gonna put this here so that we can see about one and a half scallops. And I'm gonna try to do this. Oh, I didn't need to peel these ones off yet. So I'm gonna just cover those back up so it doesn't stick. Now, if you ever need to color or cover back up, put the glossy side back on. Don't put the non-glossy side or you won't get them back off of the dimensionals. I know that because I've done it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna cover about one and a half of these guys. There we go. Okay, backing's all pulled off. So now we can go ahead and glue this down to the card. So I can just glue these parts here. Now I do wanna just reach in here, pull those off. And we can just go ahead and put some Tombow. We're getting near the end of the bottle, everybody. It's 
almost done. I don't know if it's going to make it to the end of the card. Do you guys think it's going to? There we go. We'll see if it makes it. So now this is going to just go right here. Just give that a press. There we go. I'll keep that glue upside down in case I need it again. Now we have the remaining elements. We've got our vellum. I'm sorry you can't get that anymore. I have a silver foil star instead of this one here. And then I have my greeting element. So what I'm going to do is we are going to... Oh no, thank you, Linda. I had heard they were at one point they were gone and supposed to come back, but I will have to call and find out if they are coming back at all. I hope so. They're my favorite, but I'm not sure that they're going to. Hi, Rose. How are you? Okay, so I am going to dimensional just right behind the bottom of the raccoon. I'm going to put some other dimensionals on him too, but I'm only going to um, peel the backing of the one in the corner. Sorry, I just had to grab a new sheet. I was out of little ones. So we've got to grab these. I'm going to put one just, this is the one I'll peel, but I am going to put some other ones on here too. I will put one on the balloons that will overlap here. He's going to need one behind his head and then he will need one down, half one by his feet as well. Whoops, look, that came off. Okay. Hi, Margaret. Okay, now I've got all these backing stuck to me. So this little one here is the one I'm gonna peel the backing of. And the one that, there's one here that the backing came off when that, I cut that little one in half and it didn't work properly. So I'm actually gonna take another backing and cover it just so it doesn't stick down where I don't want it to. But I'll remember, or I'll try to remember to reach in and pull that off after. I'm just going to place this here for now while I dry fit these things. So this little vellum piece is not specifically held in place just yet. Okay, so this little raccoon, there he is. I can actually peel this one off because I can still tuck this in and put it in place, okay? So now I wanna tuck in this little star. I think that I used a bigger star, but that's okay. So this one is gonna go right here. So I'm gonna put a glue dot on the back of this star and it's gonna stick to the vellum. So again, this little vellum piece is just in place. I'm tucking the star, there's a glue dot right behind here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a glue dot on the back of the U. Now, here's where I went wrong. No, nope, we're gonna be okay. So I'm just gonna tuck that back in here. Again, it's not attached yet. It will need to be, but not just yet. There we go. I wanna put a glue dot on the front of You Are The Best. Those ones are a little too small. So I've got a glue dot here. Now, I'm gonna just reach in here. And now this will stick to the back of that little raccoon. There we go. So now it's sticking behind the raccoon. And now with all this in place, I can stick a couple of glue dots behind that star. And now I know that I won't see those glue dots on the front of the vellum. So then we'll just reach in and stick that little vellum layer back in place. And then we can tack the rest down. And I can also stick another glue dot behind the star in between the star and the vellum. And that'll help keep that star tacked down as well, rather than just having one. So now I'm gonna reach in here and stick that. So now my star is held in place 
and I've got two glue dots there that I can just lift this up and tuck this into place here. So nice and easy to just tuck that in there. And because there's only two little glue dots, I've got a little wiggle room to straighten that out. There we go. Now I wanna put a little dimensional behind here. So I'm gonna reach in there with a dimensional. So I just grab my scissors. I'm gonna peel this backing off. And then I can just reach behind here and stick that there. And reach, I've got one on here. I'm gonna peel that backing off again. There, we don't want it to stick back down. There we go. And then this one is gonna go just right behind there. And I'm gonna just wiggle that up a little bit. There we go. So now everything is in place with minimal adhesive, but all hidden in areas where you're not going to see it. So there we have that one. Now all I need to do is add the little gems and the twine. So hopefully that gives you some tips on how you can just tuck your adhesives in without having it, especially when you're using vellum, because I'm sure some of you guys have some in your stash, even though we can't purchase it anymore. I'm sure you've got some in your collection. And that way that'll help give you some tips. Now also we do have window sheets still, so you can apply those same adhesive applying methods to window sheets if you're going to use those in place of vellum. Now I have some of the in color twine. I don't know that this has sold out. I can't be sure, but the 2024, 2022 to 2024 outgoing in color twine. So I am using the lemon, not lemon lime twist, sorry. This one is Parakeet Party, but it goes perfectly fine with Lemon Lime Twist cardstock. So that is what I chose to use for just a tiny little piece of twine. I didn't wanna just go with white. I use a lot of white and a lot of linen thread, as you guys know, so I wanted something with a little more pop of color. So I went ahead with this one here. I love this one. We used to have Lemon Lime Twist Baker's Twine years ago when Lemon Lime Twist was an in color. I'm po oh, you know what? No, it was Lucky Limeade, which would go fine, I think, too. So I've got a little glue dot behind here, and I am just making that look as though it is tied to the balloons that are in the raccoon's hand. So there we go. Hopefully you guys can see that. It takes a minute to show up on my end, but there we go. We have got our cute little raccoon with his pile of balloons, his or her. And then we have the ombre matte decorative dots. So we are going to use these to add just a little bit of embellishment. I think I have my piercer nearby, so I'll use that. I should have used the piercer. Um, when you guys saw me tucking the glue dots and the dimensionals in there, I find it easier to use the piercer as opposed to scissors. I just hadn't gone to grab the scissors. So if you're going to try that, try it with your piercer instead. So I've got three little gems here and I will do the same thing on this one. So I'm going to go here, here. You know what? This one's got to go a little lower. And if you see, I moved that, if you pick it up just carefully, it should be okay. And then I'm gonna put one right up here on the star. I'll move this one over a little bit. There we go. Now the ombre matte decorative dots, look at all those that you get. I think these are retiring. I could double check for you guys real quick. You may as well check that out. Went right past it. Oh, maybe they're staying. They are staying, phew. So you don't have to worry about those today. There's all kinds of other products that are retiring. So those you don't have to rush on. But that is my project for today. So again, if you would like a chance to win this one here, you can share the video, come back and comment that you shared so that I know that you have. 
and next Sunday I will be doing the draws for all of the people who have shared throughout this week. I'll just do them all at once. It'll be much easier for me. And then, hey Jan, and then I can try to get them mailed out before I go. If not, I'll mail them when I get back. Tonight, I will also be going through the comments on my post where I said, guess how many stamp sets I have lost um, to the retirement list. So if you wanna get your guess in, if you go find the picture on my page that has all of my stamps in the shelf, you can still comment there up until nine o'clock tonight. So you have an hour left and then I will go through the comments and I will make a post tonight to tell you who won. So um, I can't wait to go through all those. I've seen some as they've been coming in and it has been entertaining for us to say the least, but I'll post that tonight. Once again, if you guys are interested in joining In Color Club, that re registration for that is open and I will order it on May 1st from Mexico. We do, however, have a really great promotion if you are interested in joining during the month of May, Stampin' Up! is actually giving you, on top of the starter kit, the in-color collection of ink pads, an in-color collection of cardstock, the in-color markers, and the in-color DSP, all on top of the, the starter kit that you already get to choose for yourself. So the regular starter kit is 135, but you get to pick 165 in product, and then you're gonna get all those in-color products on top of it. So I'll be in touch with anybody who is in In Color Club or who registered to make sure that joining isn't what you would rather do. We just learned that yesterday. So I'll make sure I let you guys know about that and then stay tuned for the class, other class information coming up. And if you are interested in doing our online sale, make sure that you message me. We're working on amending the vendor agreement with all the pertinent dates and I can get that sent out to you guys so you can review it and decide if you want to be a vendor or shop. All right, that's everything for tonight. Thank you guys so much for joining. I'll be back tomorrow and um, I will let you guys know if it'll be daytime. There's a greater chance it could be daytime in the next two days, but likely evening, but I will com or not comment, sorry. I will post sooner than later. Sorry, today was short notice, but um, I will post and let you guys know what time it will be tomorrow. And again, if you have any requests, comment and let me know what you would like to see me share with you guys. If there is a card that has retiring product that you want to see done, that if it's one I can show you, if it's not from like a paid tutorial or stamp club or something like that, then I can possibly demo that for you guys. Otherwise, maybe you'll come up with something new. Have a good night, everybody. Talk to you soon or see you tomorrow.